welcome to the Weekend Warrior. Today we are talking about food allergy testing, what you need to know. Yesterday on Instagram stories, I talked about that my son, who developed this skin condition for the past several months that seemed to get worse rather than better, was recently diagnosed with food allergies, which include turkey, carrots, almonds, cashews, and and that came out from everyone. And thank you guys so much for chirping in and letting me know what questions you have was what food allergy testing do I use and why? There are many options out there, one of them being a your friendly allergy. Please beware that when you go to your allergist's office, they only test one branch of the immune system, which is the immediate hypersensitivity reaction, also known as IgE. Basically, when you eat a peanut and you can't breathe, that's an IgE reaction. You drink milk and you immediately develop hives IgE reaction. And then the parents walk away frustrated going, oh, well, they're not allergic to anything, so food actually has nothing to do with their illness. When in fact, that's simply not true. Often in people struggling with eczema, asthma, ADHD, attention issues, etc., these tests come out negative. So a lot of patients get frustrated because in the high deductible era, even these tests are not covered by insurance. Trying to look for an actual allergy testing, I prefer using a test that tests four different branches of the immune system, which is IgE, recognized by all allergists, IgG4, IgG, and complements. Well, and in standard medicine practice, this is not recognized, nor is it going to be validated by a provider. You cannot get this test anywhere in regular allopathic medicine this test is only available through your integrative practitioner or functional medicine doctor you know it's interesting because the first thing that comes to mind is like oh well if my allopathic doctor doesn't do this test that means that this test is full of baloney that you're talking about and that it has no medical evidence behind it and nor any scientific data when in fact actually lots of papers to show correlation between igg and igg4 and complement food intolerances and actual symptoms. And I've observed this in clinical practice over and over again, but if we're gonna talk medical literature, absolutely, let's do it. Now, the problem is that you can find a whole bunch of these allergy tests online. I've even seen it with a Groupon. Are you kidding me? Here's the thing. If you find a place online that is a really good price, I need you to call that lab and find out if they have white papers. White papers mean that the lab actually has reference ranges that has been tested against normal subjects to validate their test. So just because it's a Groupon, just because it's online and somebody's sponsoring it, please be careful because you're going to end up spending more money because you get lured into false sense of getting a test done. A lot of stuff out there that is shady. I particularly use Dunwoody Labs who is run by a a very renowned, actually naturopath, who's created her own lab in order to meet the needs of her patients. And this lady is so incredibly smart. I meet with her every three months and she's just a wealth of knowledge and they're continuously updating their reference ranges, continually updating how to capture the data, uh, looking at the scientific literature. I mean, I have a question about a medical paper related to one of my patient's concerns based on her labs, boom, in my inbox less than 12 hours. Incredible. I don't even know how she sees patients in clinic. Other providers in town who I'm sharing patients with are so impressed by this lab that they've requested um, access to being able to order these labs as well because it's the most comprehensive lab that they have seen on the market, which is amazing. Now back to why we're going to do one of these tests. You know, there's a lot of sick kids out there. I mean, rates of eczema are on the rise, asthma, allergies, you name it. So we're just going to focus on those three for a second. A lot of folks come into my clinic wanting to find out the cause of their child's eczema. They've been to the dermatologist, nothing's working, they're tired of steroids and topical other applications. So then we say, okay, well, this is what we have to do in order to figure out what the labs are and how to do it. And a lot of parents say, oh my gosh, that's really expensive, I'm gonna do it on my own. What ends up happening is parents spending a whole lot more money, a lot more time and frustration because sometimes, a lot of times, eczema, allergies, and asthma are not as straightforward as you think. So a lot of you that follow me, which is awesome, may know about dairy and gluten. Now, that can be really hard to eliminate, and that is a great step if you want to not do a fancy test. 
But what if you have done those things and it doesn't work? We need more foods. Please get some black and white data and partner up with somebody that's going to help you figure out how to eliminate and replace because just eliminating foods can lead kids to having nutritional deficiencies. So are people who can help you and you don't have to do it on your own, exhaust yourself, frustrate yourself and spend more money. My mamas out there are warriors. This is why it's Weekend Warriors. They're warriors. They're no, they feel no one's listening to them and they need to advocate for their children. And now they have put on their MD degree on their shoulders and they're like, I'm going to figure this out. There's the other thing that I've learned about allergy testing. I've had kids with really severe eczema and it seemed like, oh, you know, dairy and gluten are the problem. They removed it, didn't get better. We did allergy testing and they were allergic to rice. My son's allergic to turkey. Uh, kids allergic to grapes. I mean, some weird stuff. And now my people out there that are, are in the allopathic world, like that's weird and that's voodoo medicine. Well, here's the thing. The gold standard of food allergy testing and knowing if it's right, you remove it and then you reintroduce it. In the cases that I mentioned above, those specific foods were removed, eczema cleared up, food was reintroduced, eczema flared back up. So we validated the test with a gold standard, which is an oral challenge. Now, the other thing is that it is not enough to just remove foods. You don't just remove foods and then you walk around going like, oh, I hope one day these get better. You have to heal the gut. So a lot of kids have food allergies because their mamas had processed food during pregnancy. They ate tons of sugar and carbs because they didn't know. Because we didn't take probiotics. I didn't know. Because at, at delivery, we had antibiotics from group B strep or C-sections. Because when the babies were little, they had ear infections and required antibiotics. Because as toddlers, they required sinus infections and they had asthma, more antibiotics and more steroids. How about infants who've been on Zantac for periods of time? All of this contributes to leaky gut. Leaky gut then causes food allergies to make it brief and then now we're dealing with this so we need to remove the food that keeps irritating and annoying the gut and you have to be on a very specific protocol that is individualized to your child in order to heal the gut and then we could reintroduce the food back in and the children will be able to tolerate now the question's coming what supplements should my child take in order to heal his or her gut very hard to tell without knowing your story, without some lab work to identify mineral deficiencies. And that individualized to each person, to each family. And that's why you need a specific functional medicine or integrative provider to help you on this journey so you can get done with this in a short time and stop wasting money. Oh.